Hello and welcome back once again to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow and this is the Blood Phalanx build. That is why I'm dressed as a clown. It's a build. I didn't choose this appearance. Who would choose this appearance? What you're looking at is a really interesting mechanic between the Ash of War, Lint Blade Phalanx, and the Incantation Blood Flame Blade. With this incantation, I am enhancing the Ash of War to shoot out little magical blades of bleed damage, which as you can see will proc bleed at range, which is very, very deadly. Simply combining basic attacks with this Ash of War normally is an annoying thing to deal with. When you combine the fact that I've got bleed weapons with my Blood Flame Blade, and these four bleed daggers flying at you at a different time, well, it makes PvP a nightmare to deal with. Maybe you roll the blades, but then the katanas come in. Or maybe both hit you at once, leading to insane burst potential. The pressure is really on with this build in PvP, but in PvE, it's also very strong because we can enhance it in other ways, making use of, say, the Sigil, Terra Magica, further increasing our magic damage, leading to big burst, and also staggers for critical damage. So what we've got here is a very legitimate, very deadly, ranged bleed build. It might not be seppuku, but it's pretty damn good. Let's take a look at it in PvP. What we're doing is buffing up our weapon with Blood Flame Blade. From there, our Glint Blade Phalanx is going to be dealing the ranged bleed build up and damage. Because the cast time on the Ash of War is only a brief moment, keeping those swords up ready to fly at the opponent constantly is very easy and effective. They themselves provide a lot of pressure, as I said, working as a great roll catch or forcing them to roll out the way of it, which will then lead you into a roll catch with your swords. The massive danger of that bleed buildup on the Blood Flame Katana, the Katana's bleed buildup in general, or the blades flying at you from the Phalanx, all leading to a lot of burst. This is a lot of pressure on the opponent, and of course, it's a lot of pressure at range as well. Whenever one of those bleed procs triggers, thanks to my mask or my talismans, I'm going to get better AR, better damage, and better blade damage at that. A little trick we can do before the fight even begins is get that bleed proc and get that extra attack power right from the beginning of the fight. By using something like seppuku on an offhand weapon like our offhand katana, we'll get the mask and talisman proc even though we're about to swap off that weapon and start buffing up with blood flame, instantly losing seppuku. But it doesn't matter, we still had that bleed proc on ourselves, now we've got that attack power for the whole PvP duel. I find an incredible combination of simply jump or crouch attacking right as the blades have flown or about to. That leads to the massive burst that's pretty hard to avoid one way or the other, but if you do hit them with the katanas first, the phalanx swords, they're likely to hit because they're currently flinching and then you can see like in this example this guy just gets blown to pieces by that even against full ranged magic spamming players these swords are incredible if you can get the cast off while they're harassing you it'll actually prevent their future casts they'll go to do an incantation or a spell and of course they've got an animation on that when they stand still to do that they're super vulnerable to the bleed flying blades it'll even interrupt them let alone do big damage especially if you get the blood proc overall i found this build in pvp super fun and effective it's this horrifying range bleed pressure combined with the classic long katanas that just works really well well it's not broken like double seppuku it is very strong and a nightmare to deal with it would certainly seem much like any good bleed build it's going to be scary but the fact that this is also a magical range version is incredible but on the other hand we have the pve version to consider which has some extra steps so we make some changes we make use of terra magica which is a sorcery that puts down a sigil on the ground increasing magic damage for the pve build we'll drop earth tree's favor and we'll actually put on the magic scorpion charm which will raise our magic attack even further at the cost of some damage negation which we don't care about in pve together while standing in that sigil you've got a 65 percent damage increase on the swords while using blood lords and the mask bleed proc for the fight so the idea is you want to fight inside of that magic sigil as much as possible for the huge damage increase this means our pve stats are going to be a little bit different to the pvp ones since we want 20 intelligence to use terra magica and also a basic staff to cast it i dropped some vigor to make that happen in this case in pve the phalanx swords actually stagger the enemies though which will lead to critical opportunities that's why we have a dagger to swap to to deal some extra improved critical damage compared to other weapons. So after a stagger, we can swap quickly to our dagger and get an extra damaging critical. Overall, it's very effective and fun to use because the magic blades fly at great distances. So we can set up before the fight and then do the final preparations going into it from downtown. Of course, at any time, we can make use of our swords, right? Our katanas. 
We have Blood Flame Blade on the main weapon, so our bleed buildup and our damage is going to be great, especially with lots of decks and keen. So I found this worked best when I did the whole setup and then traded hard with my katanas and the phalanx, keeping that active the whole fight. That led to a lot of burst damage and then into staggers and then the dagger burst to follow up. So for a PvE is a bit silly, but very fun and works well. But now let's explain the build so you can try it yourself if you want to. There are two options you can use with your sword. So I'm using the katana here because they're a great option to run glint blade phalanx, the ash of war. We're running them in keen with a nice amount of decks with our stats. You could run them in say intelligence just to showcase that idea though of running an intelligence version of this setup. Uh, you can run it on the main hand with the glint blade phalanx thanks to of course the ash of war itself. With the off hand with seppuku you're not going to be able to do that. Meaning you can actually increase the damage of your main hand but lose the damage in your offhand doing this. Overall it works out very similar but having higher intelligence would allow you to work in some sorceries if you choose to run that. So it's an option but now back to the build. But of course it's the Miscorde as the dagger option. We're running the Dragon Communio seal because we're running a tiny bit of arcane. For our armor we have the white mask which is going to increase our attack power when we get a bleed proc and then three pieces of the Spellblade set, Rogier's set. This says that it strengthens Glintstone sorcery skills. It actually increases the magic damage of magic damage dealing ashes of war so perfect in this case since it's an ash of war build we're using shard of alexander as always we have the magic scorpion charm to increase magic damage but i would not recommend using that in pvp due to the damage negation. Instead of that, I would run Erdtree's Favor plus two for the health, stamina, and equip load. We, of course, have Lords of Blood's Exaltation. This is further increasing our attack power when blood loss occurs. And then since we're spamming an Ash of War, lowering the FP cost of that is a great idea with the Carrion Filigreed Crest. Lastly, with a Flask of Wondrous Physic, I also use the Magic Shrouding Cracktear for better magic damage. For the PvE build, we're using any staff that you can run at 20 intelligence or lower. And of course, equipping Terra Magica to our memory. From here to get set up in a PvP fight, what I'm doing before we start is start with the seppuku before they even load in. As you can see, I've now got that buff at the top left from the talisman and the white mask is going as well. Now I can swap off, lose seppuku, but that's fine. And blood flame blade. I can then use my wondrous physic and then we can swap to our main set and activate the phalanx. From here, we're ready to go. It only takes a few seconds once you're used to doing that. And you can time it just as they load in for the jewel. In PvE, we do a little bit of extra setup where we put down the sigil just before we start to go. But that's about as far as it goes. But there you have it. The PvE and PvP versions of the Blood Phalanx build. I find it really cool and really fun. In PvP, it is very deadly, very legitimate. It's a strong contender for a really good PvP build. In PvE, it's also super fun, but does require that bit of extra setup. Overdoing it with a phalanx spam wasn't the way as I tested, but combining them with basic combos with your melee weapons, that absolutely was, and that led to big burst potential. As always, a big thank you to Josh for helping me with the build. We hope you liked it. If you'd like to see more builds on the channel, then drop a suggestion in the comments or drop a like, that really helps. For now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.